Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and in this video what we're going to be doing is talking about the five reasons why I was finally able to switch to Linux after using it off and on for so long. So getting into it, the very first time I ever tried out Linux was way back in 2008, I think it was Ubuntu 8. It used the Mate desktop and that was really cool, it reminded me a lot of either like the kind of Windows 98 or even the Windows XP start menu with kind of how it was formatted. But I always ended up switching back to Windows because there's always some sort of compatibility issues. I was in school, it was the main computer at my house, so other people used it and like my mom was in college at the time. So she needed easy compatibility with like Microsoft applications, which at the time Linux didn't provide all that well. There was always something wrong, especially in like Word documents. You'd always have issues with the formatting of it. You'd have to completely reformat anything that you've tried to move over from Linux to Windows. As time went on, I switched back and forth. I would usually install Linux on a machine, use it for a month, and then realize I just couldn't get by with what it offered. And I was gradually getting more into the Adobe Creative applications like Premiere, Photoshop, things like that. And it, there was just no suitable alternatives in Linux at the time for the feature set that I needed. But this has recently changed because there are so many alternative applications that will work for almost any need, whether if you're doing animation, video editing, graphic design work, everything. A notable application is uh, Kden Live. I use Kden Live almost on a daily basis. I used to use Adobe Premiere Pro on a daily basis, primarily because of some of the keyframing features. But at this point, I can honestly say that with my use case, Kden Live is better than Adobe Premiere Pro. Not saying a lot. The only thing I really miss is Photoshop. I'm forcing myself to learn GIMP, and as I learn more, it's getting easier. Eventually, I'll probably like GIMP more than Photoshop, but we'll see if any alternatives come out that kind of match that user experience. And speaking on the Microsoft Office applications I just talked about, it's almost seamless. There's no issues with formatting or anything like that. If you just install Microsoft Fonts in most cases, you're going to have a good time moving files over from Linux to Windows and back and forth. And before when I was switching back and forth so much, every time I would install Linux, I would always immediately get Wine and try to install the Windows applications that I would use. And it just never worked right. I mean, you'd get them to open, some of the features would work, but it would end up crashing always. And with everything available, all the alternative applications, some of them I wouldn't even call alternative because they are better. I haven't even installed or even attempted to install Wine at all on any of my Linux machines at the moment. It's just not necessary anymore. And this takes us to our second reason that I finally completely made the switch over to Linux, and that is the customization aspect. Now with Windows 10, you can do a couple things. You could change like the general colors, kind of. You could change your wallpaper, you can move your taskbar around and resize it. There, there are things that you could do, but not nearly to the extent that you can in Linux. The last time I actually had a good time configuring the visual display and all that of Windows was way back in Windows 7 with a, a program called Custo Pack Tools. That was the last time that it was absolutely wonderful to be able to customize with you could still do a lot of customizations with third-party applications in Windows, just like what you used to be able to do in custom back tools, but it usually comes with a lot of flaws, things break, something updates and it completely ruins everything, and you don't have that problem in Linux. You can customize it and it's going to work and be perfect. It's built to be customized. Speaking of the custom pack tools, one of my earliest videos way back in 2012 was a video of me going over how to make Windows 7 look like a Macintosh system, so that's just kind of cool. And speaking of, 2012 was a pretty interesting year. With Linux, there is probably unlimited options when it comes to the customization. First, you could pick your base operating system, so probably a Debian or Arch, so what core you want running. And then from there, you could pick your either desktop environment, Windows Manager, to meet your exact workflow. And then even from there, in a lot of the desktop environments, window managers, you can further customize it to your exact visual preference. There's just so many themes, add-ons, extensions, just so much that you could do with it right out of the box. On my actual production machine, I'm using a KDE Plasma because it's just so fun to tinker with. There's so much you could do, so many different themes. It's almost endless and 
there's so many community supported widgets and add-ons that you don't need to get super into the code. You could just install things, try it out. You don't like it, you could remove it. It's awesome. On my laptop where I write most of my articles and do homework on, I have a GNOME and it just works and looks beautiful out of the box. And with GNOME, you can still add extensions and change some of the theming. But the, like I said, it's nearly unlimited what you could do with the customizations and options within Linux. And that brings us to number three. I'm gonna talk crap about Microsoft for a little bit because Windows 10 as a core operating system is beautiful. Before we go any further, one thing that I noticed is a vast majority of people who watch these videos are not subscribed. It's free, costs you nothing, and you could always unsubscribe, so make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Window, I actually love Windows 10. I love the PowerShell. I love how everything's laid out. I, I even love the visual appeal of the start menu and kind of the idea around that. And that's the thing, I love the idea. I don't like what they did with it. And the reason for that is because it's just riddled with ads, kind of, it's it's like built-in adware. It's I just don't like it. When you install the operating system, you have to go through and uncheck every little aspect that you don't want them to track. If you don't want to use a Microsoft account, you that's kind of a pain. You have to go and set up like internal system security questions. And most people just end up giving in, creating a Microsoft account, letting them track everything you do. And then it's kind of sketchy too, because if you log into your Microsoft account on a new machine, it'll do things like import your background and kind of set some things up for you. Now that sounds convenient, but you're really trading convenience for that kind of privacy concern. To go through and fix all this, it requires hours of going into different program files, deleting things, editing the registry, going into the PowerShell, configuring things, getting rid of stuff. One of my most popular videos is getting rid of, well, one of my most popular Windows videos is getting rid of Cortana, which is garbage and completely almost useless for a desktop environment. To summarize this whole category, all I'll say from here on is it comes with Candy Crush pre-installed and it's actually kind of a hassle to remove it. So now number four is actually the support that the Linux community provides. They are wonderful. Now I'm not saying Windows doesn't have good community support. The Windows community is really good. There's a lot you could do. You could get help pretty quick. It's the most popular operating system in the world. So if you have an issue, granted are you gonna find a solution? But the Linux community is just good to work with because in general, they all have the same ideology. Everybody wants you to succeed with your Linux distribution because generally everybody wants to have Linux kind of increase in market share. So everybody generally is willing to help out each other. Granted, there are some people who are kind of negative in the Linux environment and there can be kind of fighting between people who prefer Debian, prefer Arch. Hey, you did this wrong. Hey, you shouldn't do this. There is that like there is in any community, but overall there is overwhelming community support, especially for people who are brand new in the Linux community. Now me, I, I'm pretty good with computers. I know my way around them, but I, I just installed Windows, like I said, about six months ago, so I'm still learning everything. And it's just awesome to be able to search for a issue, arch, and then find commands, find full tutorials. There are so many like wiki pages for all kinds of different things. There are people active on YouTube actually replying to comments. It's wonderful. And this community-driven environment leads us to number five on this list, which is the fact that it is free and open source. The fact that just about everything is free and open source is awesome because it just makes it so accessible to everybody, depending on what your financial situation is. It's not like you're getting something less. In most cases, you could do much more with Linux than you could with a, for example, $199 Windows install or $10 if you decide to buy it on the gray market. It's wonderful what you can do with it at the cost. Granted, there are some distributions or uh, software that do require some paid versions. For example, Zorn OS has a paid version, but then again, you can get the free version. It's install everything the paid version has. The reason they do that is to kind of support the development, but then there's paid versions of like DaVinci Resolve, so which adds a lot more support, things like that. But overall, everything is free and open source. You can't beat the cost of free. And just the open source thing, that's almost a bigger deal because anybody can get the code. If you're 
technically inclined enough to, and edit things, change things within operating systems. You can set it up exactly how you want. And when it comes to open source, your limitations are your programming knowledge. So down in the comments below, please tell me why you decided to switch to Linux or maybe even why you are hesitant to switch to Linux. Is there an application that you need that isn't available on Linux? Comment down below and there's probably somebody that can help you out, try to find an alternative, anything like that. Generally, the comments on here are pretty friendly and you can have open discussions with people. It's, it's wonderful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, you know what to do. I hope you have a wonderful day. Oh, wait, there's a link to a playlist there, video there. Subscribe somewhere over here. Have a great day and goodbye.